Hey guys, this is Super Vishu here for another episode of Rock Talk. Today is the 30th anniversary, August 27th, 2021, of one of the greatest, not the greatest, but one of the greatest debut albums of all time. Pearl Jam's 10 today, guys, turns 30. Hard to believe that Pearl Jam is 30 years old. What's happening? So... This album, from start to finish, is a masterpiece. And I mention it as one of the greatest debut albums of all time. There, there was no Pearl Jam before this. I mean, there was like Temple of the Dog or whatever, or like, or like early stuff with like, you know, Chris Cornell. But like, let's face it, 10 changed musical culture. 10 was launched in August, today, August 27th. But later next month in 1991, September, Nirvana's Nevermind bumps Pearl Jam and boosts it up quite a bit. And causes a, causes both albums to explode across the planet, was creating a grunge movement. So, pushing alternative rock and punk rock onto the all the um, record companies' rosters, pushing all this stuff. And I gotta tell you, I've listened to this album a lot in the past couple weeks, just prepping myself for today, August twenty seventh. Um, I gotta tell you this. This, I mean, once, even flow, still played on the radio. Alive, still played on the radio. Why go? Eh, here and there. Black, played on the radio. Do, 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 do. Jeremy, Jeremy Spoken. Come on. Great stuff. Side two, Oceans. Great track. Porch, fantastic track. Garden, Deep, and Release. One of the greatest debut albums of all time. I don't. I. I still don't think it's the greatest debut album of all time, because I mean, yes, there's like it's. It's definitely like probably the second best in my opinion. Um, for those of you who are probably watching, saying, well, "What's the number one?" I would say Guns N' Roses' "Appetite for Destruction," because think about it. They're consistently played on radio. Those three or four songs from that from that one record alone, "Sweet Child of Mine," and "Welcome to the Jungle" and Par- "Paradise City," play it all the time. So. That's what I think. But personally, Pearl Jam's 10 is like directly up there. I think it's number two, to be honest. Of the greatest debut albums of all time that still play on the radio, still have big hits, still have success, have spawned countless generations of musicians with one album. This is definitely up there for sure. I mean, look at this cover. I mean, the, the original cover is just this up here, from this part up. But it just says Pearl Jam on the cover. I mean, every, like the, the five of these guys... Together, they say bands are born out of like a certain. They come from a certain place at a certain time, and Pearl Jam is definitely a testament for those. I love Pearl Jam. I mean, I'm a big fan of them. I mean, this is their best album. I, I mean, Vice Versus and Vitality are very good as well. But like, the, as far as a, a complete album goes, I prefer this. This is me personally. Uh, I know the the hardcore Pearl Jam fans are saying, like, "Whoa, whoa, whoa!" I'm like, listen, I love Pearl Jam. I want to see them live. I've heard they're incredible live. I have not seen them live yet. That's shame on me. I know. Shame, shame. I get it. But like this album from start to finish, it's flawless. It's a masterpiece. And it launched a different style of music at the time that was brand new. And that's something we need today. See, back when the Beatles first came out, it was new. And then it launched all these different bands and artists and solo people and whatever. Then... Once hair metal got shot in the arm with a kick in the teeth that it needed with Nirvana's Nevermind and Pro Jam's 10, the next big wave of rock music came out in the late 90s, in the in mid to late 90s with Pearl Jam, Nirvana. Um, this album is great. And it really, it stands the test of time. The production quality, everything about this album is great. And Eddie Vedder, I got I got to talk about Eddie Vedder. Eddie Vedder, what a guy, man. Eddie Vedder, if you're out there watching this and listening to this, I love you. You're an awesome dude. I have deep respect for you and your work. Um, I love I love Gigaton. I love the new album that just came out too. It was fantastic. Lightning Bolt was great. Yield was fun. Um, give like, Giving a Fly, Sirens. You, you're a musical genius, Eddie Vedder. I love you very much. Um, your uh, in your band Pearl Jam is great. Um. So, one of the unique things about this album is that when it first came out, it didn't do as... Because it came out in August, today, August 27th of 1991. It didn't do as well 
like it started to pick up steam a little bit, but when Nirvana's Nevermind came out, it launched. It, it fate would have it, it stuck the two together, and Nirvana's Nevermind helped push Pearl Jam 10 up and skyrocket, and like Jeremy's on the radio, even Flo's on the radio, all this stuff, right? And it's, it's the hot new stuff, and because I'm not saying Nirvana, Nirvana did help Pearl Jam out a little bit, but Pearl Jam's album came out first. And uh, when we get down to September, I will review. Three albums that came out on the same day in 1991 on September 24th, which was one of the most pivotal days, I think, in rock and roll history in the 90s. Nirvana's Nevermind came out that day. The Red Hot Chili Peppers' Blood Sugar Sex Magic came out that day. And Brian Adams' Winking at the Neighbors came out that day, too. Literally crazy. Uh, I Unbelievable that all these albums came out like on the same day within, like, within 40 days of each other back in the 90s. It's nuts. Um, I love, but back to Pearl Jam, though. Um, this, uh, they were just, uh, they're such a unique band. They wanted to have, they didn't want success. They were like, no, we don't want mainstream success. It's not something we're desiring. We just want to put out our music and stuff like that. But sure enough, every band that says that eventually gets some massive success. I don't know why that happens. It's just like Green Day didn't want success. Sure enough, they got success with Dookie, American Idiot, another one. Um, but like. Pearl Jam, they fought against it with verses and vitality. They're like, and then sure enough, Better Man comes out in the, in the mid-90s. It's a big hit. Who would have thought? Um, Better Man is my favorite Pearl Jam song. I'm just going to let you know. Um, but this album shook the music industry really big. Like, this album was fantastic. It still is to this day when it came out in uh, 30 years ago. So, but, and I got to tell you, I can't emphasize this enough. Please listen to this album from start to finish. I cannot emphasize that enough. If you have not heard this album, if you have never heard of Pearl Jam, shame. They are great. They are amazing. They are one of the greatest live bands. I can't, I can't say this personally, but I, I've heard amazing things. Pearl Jam is one of the best live bands out there. Like, who would have thought? Like, I, Rolling Stone Magazine. I bring this up all the time. I love, I love reading their stuff. They had an article in 2011-12 of the top 10 live acts of all time. Number 1 to 10 was Bruce Springsteen and East Street Band at number 1. No surprise. The Rolling Stones. The Who. Uh, I believe it was Pink Floyd. I believe it was number 5 was U2. Number 6 was Led Zeppelin. Number 7 was Queen. Number 8 was Pearl Jam. What? And number nine was Grateful Dead, and number ten was was Kiss. That tells you that told me something. Really, Pearl Jam of all bands, you're gonna rank them amongst the best live acts. I have yet to see them live, and I'm curious to see them when they tour, wherever they tour, whether they tour or like the Garden or I'm in New York. I'm not gonna tell you where, but like at the Garden or they're touring in the Meadowlands. Wherever I plan on seeing Pearl Jam live at some point, because I'm, I'm I'm a big fan of their work. I love their stuff quite a bit, and I'm curious to see this album, hear the material live. Because like, it's one thing to hear like a studio recording, and it's like, it's nothing to hear a studio recording. It's not hear a live recording. And I know they're great at live recordings too. They, I think on their website they put out live concerts all the time that they've done over the years. Um, uh, fun fact, just before we wrap up for the day, uh, Pearl Jam in the '90s was. The, Eddie Vedder is a big U2 fan. He's a big Bruce Springsteen fan. His first concert ever was Bruce Springsteen and the East Street Band on the Born of the USA tour. I found that out. Uh, his first concert ever was that. And he's like, oh my God, this is great. I want to be like Bruce or want to, you know, whatever. But Pearl Jam, being that his first concert was Springsteen, he likes U2, he likes The Who and stuff like that. He is a big, big, big fan of a lot of bands. He loves R.E.M. He's listen, th 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 these guys have listened to music every single day f of their lives forever. And like so many from Roxy Music to, to Black Flag and I, I can go on and on about Pearl Jam. Bottom line, guys, what do you guys think about this? Have you heard of Pearl Jam's 10? Have you heard this album? If you have not, shame. Stream this album right now from start to finish. Do not shuffle the album. Please stream from start to finish. It's totally worth it. I cannot ever Besides this enough. So, anyways, guys, what I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Happy 30th anniversary to 10. This album is flawless, a start to finish, and hopefully we'll I'll get to see Pro Jam sometime soon. 
And uh, yeah, but for all of your rock talk episodes and other anniversary videos, keep it locked in the Super Show. The J Man is off to rock. We'll see you guys later.